Well, knocked unconscious, bones broken, forced to put up with a foul-mouthed compatriot. Not going too well for the protagonist today. And hey, at least you get to check out the very first dungeon of the game, or at least what I assume is supposed to be the very first dungeon of the game, which is a literal dungeon, like you would find in a castle. <laughs> More specifically, a cell inside of there. Really, you really uh, went all out with the uh, with the design on this one, eh, 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 Persona developers? I mean, this is uh, presumably much like Persona 4 taking place in the collective unconsciousness of mankind, influenced by what people think of a specific person or event or whatever. So it could have looked like literally anything. I mean, in, like, Persona 4, you had dungeons taking place in, like, a, a bathhouse or a strip club. Of course, the very first dungeon in that area, too, in that game, too, was also a castle, so... I don't know, it's an RPG. Maybe they just decided, hey, let's make it all RPG to start with. Get people eased in. Is this some kind of TV set? I feel like that's almost assuredly a reference to Persona 4, speaking of that, just because... Huh. Well, somebody's either having a very bad time or a very good time. I'm, I'm not gonna judge. Anyway, yeah, TV set was the basic hub world in that game, so... Maybe call back for that, maybe just coincidence. Who knows? Anyway, no real immediate danger. I mean, you'd think that if they were going to kill you, they wouldn't have thrown you in a cell, but, like, plot contrivance, too, so. R regardless, the point is that you gotta be getting out of here. Uh, Ryuji's right. Alright, so. How exactly are two normal high school kids going to figure out how to get out of here? Yo, these uh, bars are tougher than they look, or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> and, well, basically the answer is, you're not. It's <laughs> this is just... Go look around your cell. Why? I don't know. Increased tension? I mean, if you literally just escaped, I feel like uh, you're missing out on a lot of potential plot, so... Just get this little sequence instead. Well, it might be a kangaroo court, but at least they're expedient. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest here. Was there really going to be any other sentence? Again, it's like, if you're just going to send me to death, me and other guy to death, why not just kill me immediately at the start? Hey, Kamashita. He's back. In a very goofy-looking robe covered in hearts. Also wearing what appears to be like a little Jughead crown. Which I, I can really appreciate. I mean, again, collective unconsciousness of mankind could have looked like whatever he wanted. He decided to make his hat look like this the popular Archie, well, popular Archie character, Jughead. I, <laughs> no, not like a giant regal crown. Give me the little, uh, cut-apart fedora. It's a punched inside out. And also a robe covered in hearts. I mentioned in the first video, too, that uh, yellow eyes is a sign of a shadow archetype and means that he is... Uh, some sort of, has some sort of connection to one of the previous big bads of the series. Again, kind of played fast and loose with spoilers here in Yarlahotep. Yeah, 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 so we heard. Yeah, and he's also not wearing any clothes underneath that. I mean, he's wearing like a pink Speedo, judging by the model. So I, I guess that... At least we're not getting an AO rating here. Damn, Ryuji. Like, that is impressive. You should be on, like, the football team or something if you can push over a dude in full plate armor, like, weapon and shield. Oh, no, his bones. His poor bones are getting such a workout today. Oh, well, he can give a beat and can't take it. That's maybe not the best. Come on, Ryuji. I think we've been through enough here that you could consider me at least a friendly acquaintance, if nothing else. Alright, this is the protagonist that 
I'll push down a drunk guy, the, the most heinous of crimes, <laughs> at great cost to himself. I, somehow I feel like leaving a person to be killed, maybe not in his in his wheelhouse here. <laughs> Really going all out with making Kamoshida like seem evil. Again, this is the shadow archetype, most evil form of him, I assume, so. There could be something of a twist here where it turns out that like the rules are a little bit different. But I still assume that it's working on the same sort of uh, logic as Persona 4 did at this point in time. I don't know, it's only like about 20 minutes past like this video in particular that I played, so... Can't really say that I know exactly what's going to be coming up. Also, Ryuji's shirt has says ZOMG on it, which is something that I really appreciate. That's a sort of stupid design that, like... <laughs> yeah, I didn't need to subtitle that one. Sort of stupid design that I really like. Hey, it's the butterfly and everything from the start of the game. It kind of makes me almost wonder if they put in the start of the game a little bit later because this is really repetitious in some ways. Also, the fact that a few of the tutorials about to come up here are extremely redundant considering that they appeared previously in the game. Oh, this voice. Oh, what a treat. I mean, I have a hard enough time, like, trying to parse modern Japanese, and this guy speaks in, like, a Shakespearean style. Cool. Really, really nice time trying to transcribe that. <laughs> and there's a serious staple. Thou art I. Yeah, yeah, look, look at this. Look at this. Awkward in Japanese. It, it makes it look like he's about to transform into a werewolf or something. I can't even. I, I don't know. Gasp. Or as Ryuji's t shirt would say, ZOMG. Really not a good day for head injuries, is it? Oh man, that mask thing was gross. Ugh. But anyway, Arsen! Uh, pretty much, I would say it's the same guy that appeared earlier in the game where you froze time with your magic phone app. The, the same sort of like blue character. Let's see, based on what? The old French comics, Master Thief, Lupin Third was also kind of a famous anime in, in Japan. That yeah, makes sense. I'd buy it, let's just say that. So we got that. Yeah, it's kind of funny that the, the mask, which you think would be a pretty uh, normal sort of transformation device, a lot grosser than the one where they used guns. 
Yeesh. Oh no, they transformed from heavily armored, shielded, and sworded enemies into gourd men, wielding lanterns. Oh, I'm doomed now. Easily could have taken guys in full plate mail, but like... Uh, pumpkins? No, those things are basically invincible. <laughs> might as well give up right now. Anyway, yeah, I might have chosen hard mode, but they're still firmly in tutorial area, so it literally does not matter what I actually choose to do. And uh, again, I just like to point out, there in the tutorial, I already fought like the money burning ox head demon, whatever it was called. So, like, I kind of already knew how to do this. Couldn't get to this point without learning this. Which is a phrase that I feel like I might say a few times over the course of this year. And bam. Now, wait, not quite. And I think this was actually the point where I just decided to, like, what is the rush? I'm just gonna rush through all these early battles until, you know, I actually get into the, <laughs> the like, actual game. And there we go. Oh, I'm sure it will be getting much more difficult later. But as of right now, not too bad. Got a wanted poster. That's cool. I like that. Very stylish. It's very stylish UI. I, I, I mean, there's something that people have talked about a lot in the past, but it still holds true even right now. Yeah, I know. Cool, right? Like, don't don't like beat him up or anything. I, I guess they technically still think that, you know, he's not like a jack o' lantern monster, but like just a dude, and maybe killing that guy wouldn't be the <laughs> the most optimal sort of way of going about this. Of course, later on, I feel like just attacking this guy with reckless abandon would be... They're probably going to find out that that would probably have been the best course of action. <laughs> just say that. Well, I, I hope that... You know, Ryuji does actually talk like that in Japanese. I'm a big fan of dropping gerunds like that. It's the sort of thing that it's like, you, you try to run that through like a machine translation, he would just like have no idea what to do. Slurring all his words together. But anyway, sure hope that they don't have that big, bloody, gross, like, mask removing scene. This seems unnecessary, we literally just like had this scene essentially. Yeah, the big bloody gross thing. Hope that doesn't appear like in regular battles. I feel like that might be a little bit too visceral for, for me to handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he literally rules this place. I don't think he's going to be staying there for long. No, you ain't saving yet. It's uh, in the tutorial. You don't get to save until the game says you can save. And that's like a full hour from now. <laughs> Oh, man, I tell you. Well, thank God for uh, standby on PS4. Still got the big magenta splashes in this area. I wonder if they're ever going to explain that or if that's just a stylistic choice. Like, also the, the fractal vignetting, which I... It, it's neat, but, like, does it serve any purpose? I, again, something that I literally could not have gotten to this part of the game without knowing how to do. <laughs> Kind of interesting that they went with masks. I mean, uh, Persona 3 was guns. I mean, technically fake guns. And it's like, oh, the, the adrenaline rush you get from thinking you're going to shoot yourself, even though you know you're explicitly not using a real gun, like, triggered the Persona inside. I don't, it's weird. Done for stylistic reasons, essentially. Persona 4, you just, like, held up a card and then crushed it to some of the Persona. And now it's literally removing a mask, which is... Such a ridiculously literal idea of, like, the persona that it... <laughs> it's on one hand... 
like I like it, but on the other hand, it's super dumb. <laughs> ah well. Get out of this dank dungeon already. Like literally dank. It has a river running through it. Again, something that I'm pretty sure I mean, that's that's at least like, you know, using a little bit of imagination. There was definitely no river running through the school, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, Ryuji. I mean, it's like... It, not like the river or something, which I was just talking about, that you're going to be, like, surprised at. No, it's going to be the drawbridge that you go over. That actually makes more sense, if any... Eh, whatever. Stealth mechanics. Still in the game. Not codified at this point in time, though. Even though I had to actually use them earlier. Hey, that's this game. Anyway, the more important bit is the uh, event that's just about to happen. Oh, wait, no, that's not this part just yet. Yeah. Right, you gotta use these the, uh, squirrely controls to go up a spiral staircase. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a turn-based RPG, yeah. so... But, but it does look kind of... So you don't really need to have the controls be hyper-accurate, but at the same time, it does look kind of silly when I'm, like, running into walls or something because it's so fast. I guess I would rather have that than being very slow and cinematic, after all. Yeah, I mean, at least, you know, they, they do lean into the dream bit a little bit by having a... <laughs> by having a river on the second floor. That's something. It's like, you'd think that would kind of be a clue in to that maybe this is not the most... realistic of areas that they're in right now. Probably not a real person. I mean, knowing what I know about the series in general. That said, you didn't really get too much for, like, proper NPCs in previous games. So I wonder if that's going to become, like, a little bit more of a thing. Like, it, it, your shadow archetype or, like, some sort of echo of yourself exists in the, the collective unconsciousness, even though you might not in the real world. Yeah, before it was just, like, shadows in here. And that's about it. Why is there a volleyball in the cell? Yeah, I think that also kind of supports what I was saying before. <laughs> now this is what I was thinking about. Yeah, it's a mascot character. It's a cat burglar. Get it? A cat burglar. That's the pun, I guess, they were going for. At least as far as I can tell. Maybe that's not really a thing in Japanese, and it was just a total coincidence that they... That Morgana here happened to be a cat. I don't know. Either way, it continues the theme of uh, cat games that I got on the channel going right now. That's cool. I can appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree here. You're kind of out of luck as far as options go. Besides, I would look like the thing that looks like a... <laughs> extremely toyetic character. <laughs> More than, like... the... full armored figures wearing masks and your evil teacher. I was checking your cell phone. Millennials, am I right? Am I right? High five. How can you possibly not trust somebody who's making a colon three face right now? You can't. It's impossible. <laughs> that said, don't think that I won't be holding his feet to the fire on this on this promise. Yeah, whatever, just trust the cat already. Again, if you will just watch, like, the trailer at the beginning of the game, it's like, you know, what all the characters are and everything already. Or if you're just paying attention to the tutorial, it's like, you know that this is going to be a trustworthy character. I don't know, unless I, like, betray you later in the game, but I highly doubt that the... 
that the teddy bear is going to betray you. Yeah, smell that dank dungeon air. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Alright, next time. Maybe getting out of here.